Hey folks, Jay here at the view for your match day review of Leeds United's two Queen's Park Rangers 2. Not a match for the ages and not an overly into entertaining game, but a 2-0 victory is all that really matters when you come out of this. A win, three points and a clean sheet will be the story of this game. The performance is down to you to decide whether you liked that or not. I have my own opinions and we'll get to that a little bit later on. But if you liked it, great. If you didn't like it, that's okay as well. But the main thing was that Leeds came away with three points and they did that. And they did it with a 2-0 win against the bottom side in the division. Leeds needed a late second goal to just ease the nerves and calm the tensions around the place in the 95th minute from Joel Piru. And if ever there was a player that was going to come off the bench and score in a game like that, it was going to be Joel Piru and score a lovely finish. He did in a bit of a scrappy wiggle through to get there, but a fantastic finish once he got one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper position. We need to get him in more often. And that's where Joel Piru adds value for Leeds United. You would want more than a 2-0 victory against a side that are rock bottom of the league and haven't won in 10 games coming into this match. But at the end of the day, again, the story coming out of the game will be it's a win and everyone will tell you a win is a win and that's all that's important. Personally, I think performances are stuff that need to be looked at as well because they catch up on you. But in this situation, it's hard to argue with a 2-0. It's two goals. Had 1-0 been the final score? Possibly be different, slightly different conversations, but the two takes the pressure off that. From a statistics point of view, Leeds did what Leeds United do. 69% possession to QPR's 31% possession. And Leeds created an XG of 2.16 in this game, which is about where we should have been according to the scoreline. QPR 0.3 from them. But Leeds had three big chances in the game. 21 shots in total during the match to QPR's five. And of the 21 shots that Leeds took, six of them managed to work the goalkeeper, while QPR managed zero on target in that game. Another game where Ilan Melier hasn't had a save to make, which is great news for everybody. Another clean sheet with very little to do. Did what he did, did what he had to do quite well, but nothing overly strenuous for the goalkeeper in this game. But Leeds came through it. You would like Leeds to turn those 21 shots and only six on target. That needs to improve. You want to get more of those shots on target. Leeds' conversion rate versus the chances they create isn't high enough considering how many chances it takes to score a goal. So Leeds will want to start working on getting more shots on target. And you can see them on screen right now of how many shots Leeds had in and around the goal and how many they had in the box. It's crazy to think that of the 21 shots, 15 shots from Leeds came from inside the box with only two of them managing to find the back of the net. Four of them in there in the dots are the ones that were the big chances in the game. For QPR perspective, they came and sat exactly as we thought that they would. They sat in. They tried to not concede. They did it eventually. But then they decided to have a patient approach and wait for their opportunities. And in the last 10 minutes of the game, you could see that QPR's game plan starting to come into their vision as they started to push forward in the last 10 minutes to try and put Leeds under pressure. One ball dropping on the top of the net being the only really concerning moment in the second half for Leeds United. But as I said, with all the shots that they had, they managed to hit the target zero times. So really not a huge amount of pre pressure. Leeds need to find ways to beat teams like QPR. We talked about that after the Millwall game and they probably should have done it in a more comprehensive style in this game. But as I said, the story coming out of this game will be three points. Leeds have now beaten the team 2-0 at home who have, haven't won in 11 games and now sit on the bottom of the table. But they did manage to get the win. And as I said, that's what's important at this point of the season anyway. Just continuing to pick up three points against these kind of sides is needed. From the lead shots on target, Piru, Joseph, Bogle, Solomon and Nonto were all the players that got the shots on target for Leeds United and it's hard to be critical as I said once you put the ball in the back of the net too and you get a clean sheet. It's kind of job done. Even though you didn't like the football it's kind of job done. Leeds are doing enough to keep close to the top two sides and to keep a gap between them and the teams outside of the playoffs should it get to that stage. Did I love the style of football yesterday? Did I enjoy the game? No. But the story, as I said, will be a win is a win. And that's what you'll hear when people don't want to talk about the performances. They'll say a win is a win. And that's what it is. And ultimately, and everyone will say in the chat, three points is it. We move on. You've got to keep those performances in the back of your head because we've seen this month they can affect us as well. But Leeds promotion rivals Burnley, West Brom and Sheffield United all won this weekend. But Sunderland dropped points in a two-all draw against Coventry, which means Leeds now sit third in the table, two points behind the league leaders, which is where they'll want to be. From a Leeds 
the player performance perspective, I thought Jaden Bogle had a very, very good game for Leeds. Was busy throughout the game. Didn't have a huge amount of defending to do, but that's probably a nice thing to have as well. Always in space, always looking for the ball and always looking to support the attack. We probably could use him an awful lot more than we do. We're still very left-centric when we do play. A lot of the time it's left-hand side first. We don't open the game up as much as we can or as quickly as we can at times. And Jaden Bogle tends to usually be in a fair amount of space. And when he does get on the ball in attacking areas, can cause problems with link-up play into the box or with the balls that he smashes across the goal and picks up goals as well when he needed two goals this season for him now as well. Tanaka and Rotwell, very, very good in the middle of the park for me. Nothing came true there from a QPR perspective, so defensively did their jobs. From an attacking perspective, Rotwell's bursting runs forward definitely helped to lift the tempo at times in the first half when it was just getting a little bit slow and a little bit flat. He wasn't having any of that. He was bursting into the box whenever he could get a chance to get the ball. Tanaka doing Tanaka things, tidy in space, picking up the ball, finding linking up the play and, and, and stopping passing lanes from being threaded. So midfield two, excellent game. Willie Nanto far more involved on the right hand side than he had been on the left, people will say, and he has said left hand side is his best position. He's definitely more effective for Leeds United on the right-hand side than he is on the left. Way more involved in the game. Had chances, created a few himself. Passing still needs to get a little bit better. He can still under-hit and over-hit passes. His pass to, to Manor Solomon in the second half just over-hit a little bit, which could have finished off the game a bit earlier for Leeds United in troop. But overall, a far more involved game from Willian. He's 21, you'll get inconsistencies from young players. But as long as he's trying to get involved and he's working hard for the team, no moaning, no whinging, just got on with his job and that's good to see. Brendan Aronson must have been listening to Daniel Farke because he stayed more central than he has in previous games. Again, busy, worked hard, pressed well, did the job that he needed to do. And the changes predictably started to come for Leeds United in the 70th minute. Dan James and Joel Piru were the first two to come on. And while they did lift things a little bit for Leeds, it went a bit flat again pretty much straight after that. Gilavogi and Schmidt both coming in then after that and they really did a number on picking the tempo up. Gilavogi specifically but Isaac Schmidt was on the pitch to try and make a name for himself and got very much involved and had some very tidy nice moments and maybe, maybe Schmidt will get his chance now that Junior Firpo has a three match suspension for headbutt after the Millwall game something that Daniel Farkas talked about and isn't particularly happy now. Maybe. He now gives Isaac Schmidt a chance to play at left back. But the reality is, it'll probably be Sam Byram unless he's not fit to play. This month, since the last international break, Leeds have played Sheffield United and Watford and picked up six points in those two games. The results they wanted in order to try and open gaps amongst those two. But then they went off and they played Bristol City, Plymouth, Millwall and QPR. And 12 points were what everyone wanted going into that game. That, that run of games and that was the run we thought Leeds would start to clock up the points but Leeds only managed 7 points from that possible 12 opportunities missed by Leeds but other teams failures means Leeds United are still very much in the mix for automatic promotion when it comes out of this international break Leeds have got a very interesting first 5 games they will be at they'll be away to Swansea home to Luton away to Blackburn home to Derby and home to Middlesbrough Two sides in that whole group there that are inside the top 10. You again could look at this and go possible 15 points for Leeds. And that's the point in the season where you want to see Leeds now really go for it and start to pull away. But we're still in the mix, as we say. Two weeks stay over a bit of a break. It's realistically a week and a half because from Wednesday on we're talking about the game again. Leeds have a chance to rest up some tired bodies, get some work done in the training park, as well as pray that we don't get any additional injuries from the players that have gone off on international duty. We'll keep an eye on that over the course of the week. Anyway, folks, I'll be back tomorrow morning with some Leeds United news. There's a lot of changing behind the scenes happening at Leeds. We've got some detail on that. I'm back tomorrow night with the full panel match review to discuss the game in a more top line. And we'll try and get some breakdown stuff done with Lockheed during the week. I'll see how his schedule is and we'll try and organise something. So plenty more to come this week. And we've got some members content as well as some other bits and pieces that will be going out on the channel this week over the international break and then into next week we're back to talking about Leeds United getting ready for football again and we'll see how we go folks enjoy the rest of your evening and your weekend I'll be back in the morning I'll talk to you then see ya